one board eight foot long ninety six dollars <laughs> Hey, good morning and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a black cherry log that was laid on the ground probably maybe five to six years ago. Uh, I know it's been on the ground at least three years because we've owned the property that long. Mo in most cases, a log like that would not be good because you know it would be sucking moisture up and rotting. However, this log fell across several other logs and was suspended in air. So I think it's worth a shot to see if there's some black cherry gold inside this log. Let's get back to it. This, this could be difficult. I don't have anything on the rear, which is not ideal. The tires are loaded. This has kind of fell down into something else. Uh, I'm gonna ease back here and get me another bite. We go we got it out of there now this may be no good at all i hope it's got something i hope it's really cool having the rear tires ballast on this t25 gives it you know pretty significant lift capacity without having a rear implement on it but i really would rather have a rear implement hey first first impressions of that wood it's really dry, but it seems solid, very dry. And it smells good. All right, so let's talk about this log. Uh, whether it's gonna be any good or not, I don't know. See, 12 inches, it looks pretty, yeah, pretty close to 12 inches. It's got a little curve in it, so we're not gonna be able to get all of that. The other end is 11 and a half, so we've got a little taper. Uh, a little over nine foot. First, the first one was 10 foot and I had nine foot left over. So a very, very usable log. Gosh, I hope it's not all rotted. Let's get set up. All right, let's get the sawmill set up. First off, we're gonna be using uh, a not new. This has been cut on before. This is a Turbo 7 Wood Miser, seven degree blade. We got this from Joe Main. Uh, down in Georgia. I'll leave a phone number in the description. You guys call him. They they will get your blade to you very fast. I can't uh, recommend them enough. They do a good job. We don't get anything out of it. I just, I ordered the blades four or five days later, they show up. And I can't always promise it's gonna be that way, but that's it's been pretty consistent for us. So again, this is a, a Wood Miser Turbo 7 that it has, let's see, still pretty sharp. I think we're gonna do fine. All right, so touch the spring, half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, five. Let's make sure she's tracking. The other day I put a nice new belt on this. It's still good and tight. So I get with well, this bigger engine that we put on here, um, I, it seems to wear the belt out faster, the drive belt out faster. It's not a big concern because literally it's, it doesn't take very long to change it out and it doesn't have to be changed out that often. I just noticed it changed. I have to change it out more often than I did with a seven horsepower engine on it. All right, everything looks intact. Got fresh fuel in it, oil's checked. Now this is the last log I'm gonna cut before I change the oil on our new engine. So I've got plenty of fluid up here for cutting. I think we're ready to set a log on. Let me get these. Log stops backed up. I've, again, I've got a half inch difference from one end to the other. Um, probably not gonna sweat that. It's pretty, pretty, pretty mild taper. So my, my little TYM T25, it's, we got this last year and I've got 82 hours on it now, which is still not a lot of hours, but we have had zero issues out of this little tractor. For trees like this or logs like this around the log yard, around the sawmill, this little tractor though is so handy because you can see, it's just a 
about a perfect size tractor for this kind of these kind of logs. To get into a bigger sawmill, obviously you'd want the bigger tractor, but I sure do like this one. Is it gonna roll off? No. All right, we got it. So right here, this is poison ivy, and I'm not that much allergic to it, uh, but this is dry, and it seems to the dust when it's dry. Uh, irritates my sinuses, so I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, so you can see that the bark, there is some rot on this for sure. I just hope it's, I hope there is enough good in the middle that to make this worthwhile. Can you see this? This is a, it's got a really pretty substantial curve up right here. Unless you put another board under that and kind of raise it, because never mind. Yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. Put a board up under this end. Well, it's too long. I'm turning around that way. That way you can get by the track. All right, I'll buy that. Maybe you need something thicker than that. This is not thick. Well, it, you can't get it perfect. That's went up three, you know, probably two inches. So okay. I think it's going to be okay. I am going to go ahead and put another clamp down. All right, let's see if this old thing will crank up. I can crank it up in a couple of days. It's just do an oil change for sure. I'm going to take several small cuts to try to maximize this log. That move. I, I wish you guys could smell this. I mean, it, it, the, the cherry smells amazing. It's just unbelievable. And I know there is some solid wood in it, I, down here at least. Here's a little tidbit of information. So wild black cherry is, is uh, native to our area and it grows from basically the Florida all the way up to Canada in certain places. Different variations. One thing I learned about it is that the wild berries are absolutely edible. Is that the bark and the actual green leaves uh, or even the dried leaves are actually poisonous. They're they're poisonous to humans. It's a little tidbit for your information. They can actually hurt your livestock. Definitely hard right there. Give me why you got beat up, clock buddy. Look at you. You got sawdust all over you. I didn't even know you were back there. Well, you just want me to brush you? Is that what you want? You mess. Wow. Um, can't speak to the inside of the log yet, but seems pretty solid. I think this is going to be worthwhile. I don't know if we can do anything with this or not. Get up, bub. Come on, go. So this is a one inch thick slab. I believe there's enough meat on this that I can get a uh, at least a one by four out of this. Maybe a, a one by six. Or yeah. So I'll set this off to the side. But again, guys, look, listen. That's promising that it's solid all the way through. This thing's got to be have been sitting on the ground for 
at least five years. See what, this log is dry. I'll give it that, it's very dry, so it's not near as heavy. It See a big spider? Look at that big dude. Where? Right there. Messing his world up. Yeah, I, but I say there's still some, still some solid stuff in here that's gonna. Well, the inside's not. I can hear the blade struggling through it. I can see some spalding in there. Spalding. See where the sugars have turned. You see the little black lines running around. Bubba, you better leave, big spider. I don't really like spiders or snakes. You better move, or you're gonna get sawed in half. Last chance. So I am going to be, uh, I'm going to take shallow cuts. I'm definitely going to take shallow cuts. Try to save as much of this as I can. Again, a little shell, a lot of little ants in this end. Seems to be only on the outer stuff. down to good wood. The ants seem to only be in the bark. I believe we can get some one by sixes out of it for sure. That one's usable. Got a one, one little soft spot in the middle, but a lot of that board's gonna be usable. All right, so I get a lot of questions uh, why I cut this side and then rotate over and cut this side. And because the, the answer basically is because this is a manual mill. If you, ha I, at first I would cut this side and then I would cut 180 degrees out, cut the other side, and then I'd flip them over and do the side, the other two sides. So what I found is by cutting this side, rotating it, clamping it down, and cutting this side true, that then I can just push this side up to the back stops, and it saves me quite a bit of labor. Uh, and it makes it feels like I make the, the lumber a little bit more accurate. So I'll pull this dude out. Now we do, now we have this straight edge. We don't need we don't need these back stops. We use the built-in back stops. And then you have to pull the log back far enough uh, that you can rotate it over and not roll it off the back like somebody did one time I heard. I heard that was a, that happened. Now well, this can't be can't hooked right here. I'll end up rolling it off on the front. So now that's pretty, pretty much clear. I'll buy that. Some of the bigger sawmills have a 
stainless steel top. Some of the bigger front tiers, you can get a stainless steel top of the bunk. I wish they offered that for the smaller ones because it would make it slide so much easier. This one has lost its paint. This bunk has lost its paint. So it's a little bit rusty, then it drags and it marks the wood up with a stainless steel, it doesn't do that. But that's for, you know, as we get bigger, may, hey, maybe I'm, I'll make some stainless steel bunk heads for it. Tell you what we can do we're going to take another inch off here so this will actually be usable here uh, some of it will be usable i think we can get down to i'm pretty sure we're gonna get some one to sixes out of this I know this board is not perfect. It's got some rot in it right here. I know a lot of carpenters would love to have that, that meat. Yeah, looks good. One more cut will get us down to a one by six. I think we'll be all out of the rot and have a lot of solid one by sixes that are nine foot long. Wow, that's just absolutely beautiful. If you guys don't know, stay with us for a long time because we're building our, our future here. I've got about 20 black cherry logs set back that it, when our house gets done, that we're going to build a big giant black cherry farm table. I can't, I can't wait. I wish I could get there now, but we're doing all this as we, we're building our, our future uh, debt free. So it's not, it's not like overnight. All right, we'll, we'll drop this down to six inches. Give it a little, I'll give it a little six, six and a plus. That way we can take some off of the joiner. This, this is gonna be a fine board. Digging it, that's a solid board. Yeah. Just a tiny, tiny bit of, not even rotten, it's just dark, discolored right here. So this is why I never get anything done because I always stop and smell the black cherry. It's a good, it's a good call saving that log. Tanya's behind the camera raising, shaking her head and she's agreeing. That's a nice solid board right there. Our little spider, he ain't giving up. He's going for the ride. Go ahead, buddy. There he went, he finally jumped off. Bit of tension in that one. Gosh, just smells good. I'm gonna 
go ahead and take a veneer. Still some rot down here. Tanya will make a project out of this, I'm sure. This this lumber is almost completely dry. Another little veneer that gets me down to my four my four quarter mark so now I can just go through and take four quarters so on this chart I've had a lot of people ask about this too on the chart so if you put your blue mark which is your permanent mark if you put that on the seven and then go here and cut on the six your your board is not going to be one inch because you're not these marks does not take into account uh, the the thickness of the blade cut. So when you want to go to a one inch board, you need to come over to the four quarters and cut on these marks. So this mark, and then you go to here, that takes into account the loss of the blade. So important little tidbit there. So if you if you just cut by the inch marks, you'll you'll come back and when you start working with your wood, you're like, it's everything's, you know, an eighth off. So that's why. back now and I'll, we'll do a little check. If your sawmill set up correctly, that's what's gonna happen. And that dude is dead on one inch. But if you use the actual ruler, your stuff will be off. Ask me how I know that. Here's your first one. It's got a little, still got a little chalk at the end right there on this one, but the rest of them should be clear. So this, this log has been on the ground for so long that it, it's basically chalky dry already. I would imagine if we put a meter on this, it'll show acceptable to start working already. Obviously, we're getting a little water on it from our, our cutting glue, but this wood's pretty much dry. I'm not gonna lie, I'm excited. This is this is awesome. So we've got at least uh probably at least I'd say five or six good boards out of this. Just I mean, yeah, this is like I have no idea what someone would have to pay for this. Yeah, something that's just laying in the woods for five at least five years probably longer but I'm wow
Yeah, absolutely wow. I'm gonna set these down here so you can take a look at them. So I was hoping this vlog would turn out and be as good as I thought it might be because this wood's gonna be a, a, a cool project coming up. You guys know, I got a lot of comments going, hey, what are you doing with your wood? Well, some of it, uh, we don't sell a lot of wood, but we got family members that uh, are woodworkers and we have supplied them and some friends with some stuff. And then for the most part right now, we are stacking and cutting and clearing our land so that when we do build our our house and finish our barn that we're gonna we're gonna cut it and just hang it right then so we're literally uh, so close to start putting oak siding on our on our barn but that ever elusive dollar yeah so we gotta pour concrete first I was over here behind in the sawdust and even the sawdust is pretty I know I'm, I'm, I'm ridiculous about this Get more, you gonna drink cherry wood? The cherry wine. Mm -mm -mm. Imagine that plain with a clear coat on it. Even these little spots right here, you can see putting some wood putty in there and putting a clear coat on it. Does that taste good, buddy? So curiosity got the best of me. I just looked these uh, boards up. Uh, this is at the Home Depot, a one by six uh, black cherry board, eight foot long. And you understand that's not true one by six. $96. One by six, one board, eight foot long. Ours are nine foot long. Wow, I'm putting this on. I'm putting this on eBay. You can't have it no more. <laughs> hey, I would like to take this time to thank you for watching our channel. If you like this kind of crazy content, hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up. It means the world to us, and it helps our channel grow. God bless. Have a great day. <laughs>